name is Ed DaCosta. I'm an executive coach with eddacosta.com and the Ascend 90 Day Transformation Program. And you have found my YouTube channel and I am so glad that you are here. Today is Wednesday, November the 6th, 2013. The title of today's video blog entry is Worst to First. Now, why would I name a video blog Worst to First? Well, because I believe there are tremendous parallels between the world of sports and the world of business. And today I want to draw on an experience that just finished one week ago today, actually, when my beloved Boston Red Sox won the World Series. Now, you don't have to be a fan of the Boston Red Sox to get the lesson that I'm about uh, to share with you. As some of you may know, but it doesn't matter if you do or you don't, the Boston Red Sox came in last place last year. They were one of the worst teams in the league. Change their leader, change the culture, change some of the players. In fact, got players that many thought were not as strong as the players that uh, were traded away, were picked by most people to finish towards the bottom of the standings, yet not only did they finish first in their division, but they went to the playoffs and they won the World Series. How did they do that? Well, they changed the name that they were playing for. What am I talking about? Well, as most of you know, if you watch sports, there's two names on a jersey, right? And I've got a Boston Red Sox jersey, a real one, actually. What's it say on the front of the jersey? It typically says the name of the city, or other versions of the jersey will say the name of the team. And it doesn't matter what sport, that's typically the case. And what's the name on the back of the jersey? The name of the back of the jersey, if there is one, is the name of the player. And many of the players on the team say that the culture changed dramatically and that they were unified and they were doing things not for the name on the back of the jersey, for individual glory, individual statistics, but in fact were doing things for the team's goal. And that's the lesson for today. The best teams are selfless. The worst teams are full of people that are selfish that are in it for themselves, that are in it for their own benefit and not for the benefit of others. So you can use this as a tool to check yourself, or if you're in a position of leadership, you can use it as a as kind of a way to gauge uh, the level of cooperative spirit that exists inside your organization. If there's a particular dispute or difference of opinion, ask someone. Maybe you'll think it, but maybe you can ask them, you know, what name are you playing for right now? Are you playing for your department or are you playing for the overall organization? Are you playing for yourself or are you playing for the team? And the, the history books are full of examples, whether it's in uh, politics or business or uh, in the world of sports, that those organizations that have the most selfless people, not that they have low self-esteem or they don't think much of themselves, but they have subjugated what is best for them in favor of what's best for the team. And when you do that, victory comes not just to the individual, but to the overall organization. And that's how you go from worst to first. So I hope you found this valuable. Again, my name is Ed DaCosta of eddacosta.com and the Ascend 90 Day Transformation Program. And wherever you are in this great, big, beautiful world, make it a great day. Thank you.